in Vietnam in a couple of hours. He will take questions. No doubt he will get questions on Russia. Also, maybe on this new statement on Kim Jong-un as well. That's about 1020 Eastern time. You can see that on CNN. Uh, again, uh, President Trump says that he believes that Vladimir Putin believes it when he says that the Russians did not meddle in the U.S. election. U.S. intelligence agencies say differently, as do many U.S. officials. This is what CIA Director Mike Pompeo, the National and National Intelligence Director Dan Cox, and FBI Director Christopher Wray, three people that the president handpicked, have publicly said about Russian meddling. I am confident that the Russians meddled in this election, as is the entire intelligence community. Is there any dissent within the intelligence community that you oversee on the, on the question of whether the Russians interfered with the American election? There is no dissent, and I have stated that publicly. Everyone's on, on and board. And I stated it to the president. I have no reason whatsoever to doubt the assessment of the intelligence community. I want to bring in our panel right now. Joining us from Washington, CNN contributor, Washington Post writer Adam Entis, and CNN political analyst and Washington Post columnist Josh Rogan. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. Adam, look, I, I want to start with the obvious here. It, it goes without saying that the president has now taken a different position than his entire intelligence community, not his, the entire intelligence community. They say Russia meddled in the election. They say it was done to hurt Hillary Clinton and really help Donald Trump. They say that Vladimir Putin knew it. And today, Donald Trump is saying, you know what? Vladimir Putin says they didn't. There you go. Right. So you can understand this has been uh, obviously something that uh, has been very hard for, uh, for President Trump. And when he was president-elect and when this information about the intelligence community's assessment uh, began to leak out in December, uh, he also took a very hard line and, uh, and disputed it. So there is a um, you know, consistency here. Uh, he, at, at different times, uh, says that he uh, doesn't dispute it. And then at, at other times when he's pressed on it, uh, he, he does, because obviously uh, it raises raises questions, at least in his mind, about his legitimacy, uh, which he seeks to, uh, to, to address by uh, questioning the intelligence community. And also, in addition to uh, appearing to uh, take Putin's, Putin at his word, uh, he does lash out at uh, former intelligence officials uh, during the uh, Obama administration, uh, accusing them of being political. Uh, even though his own choices for those same roles uh, have backed the intelligence community's assessments. You know, Josh Rogan, John McCain came out with a statement on this just a short time ago. He said there's nothing America first about taking the word of a KGB colonel, he means Vladimir Putin, over that of the American intelligence community. Vladimir Putin does not have America's interest at heart. To believe otherwise is not only naive, but also places our national security at risk. Your response? Yeah, no, it's clear that President Trump doesn't understand the true character of Vladimir Putin and the regime that he runs. And that is causing President Trump to make totally wrong conclusions about why Vladimir Putin says things and does things, and then that leads him to pursue strategies in dealing with Russia that are unlikely to get the result that benefits American interests and defends American national security. You know, it's a straw man argument to say, oh, of course we should have good relations with Russia. Everyone thinks it would be great to have good relations with Russia. <clears throat> the question is, can we get there without, first of all, dealing with Russian interference in our election and also Russian interference in elections all over the world and Russian interference in Ukraine and Crimea yeah. and Syria and all, all of its other bad activities. And the answer is we can't. So <coughs> what McCain and a lot of others are pointing out is that, you know, President Trump's efforts to mend rel relations with Russia are destined to fail because he doesn't understand what Russia is doing and what Russia is doing is combating U.S. power and influence in theaters all over the world. You know, Adam, Josh just said that the president's bringing up a straw man. Let me read you what he wrote tonight on Russia, because he has been making statements now in advance of his news conference, where you no doubt will be asked about this. He said, uh, when will all the haters and fools out there realize that having a good relationship with Russia is a good thing, not a bad thing? There, and he misspelled there, uh, they're always playing politics, bad for our country. I want to solve North Korea, Syria, Ukraine, terrorism, and Russia can greatly help. Um, you know, Josh brings up the point that's a straw man. It may not be mutually exclusive to say you want to have a diplomatic relationship with another major power while at the same time saying, you know what, I believe the intelligence community when they say they meddled in our election. Right. I mean, you, you can sort of, I, th I think you can really understand uh, Trump's frustration. I mean, he campaigned uh, on this, on, a, on, a, on the goal of having detente, uh, having a, a closer relationship with Russia, particularly on, on counterterrorism 
uh, efforts. And obviously, this uh, the Russia story, you know, the allegations mm -hmm. about Russia's interference in the election, the findings of the intelligence community about that interference, plus the allegations that are being investigated by the special counsel uh, about any possible coordination uh, with uh, people associated with Trump uh, in that effort. Uh, that has obviously made it virtually impossible for Trump uh, to pursue mm. what is actually a, a legitimate policy mm. objective, uh, which uh, may may not be the same policy objective that Hillary might pursue, mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton would pursue if she had won the election. Uh, but he has been he was consistent and has been consistent mm -hmm. uh, in saying that he's wanted to work to work together, particularly on terrorism issues. And there's no question that he has been unable to do so as a result of the political atmosphere that any move he makes to reduce sanctions or do anything else uh, that would uh, uh, give Russia some of the things that it's seeking mm -hmm. in order for its cooperation, he can't do because it looks like uh, he's doing mm -hmm. so in, in some sort of payback or, uh, or, or raises additional questions about uh, whether or not uh, he's somehow beholden to the mm -hmm. Russians per some of the allegations that are out there. Josh, I want to read you the statement the president just made moments ago about North Korea uh, one more time here to get your take on it. Why would Kim Jong-un insult me by calling me old when I would never call him short and fat? Oh, well, I try so hard to be his friend, and maybe someday that will happen. Uh, when I first heard this, again, this is just uh, from 21 minutes ago at this point, at first I thought, well, is he trying to take the focus off of the statements he made about Russia so reporters at this news conference will have something else to ask, or... Is it that he is trying to provoke Kim Jong-un maybe into doing something, you know, silly? Or is it because in some ways he seemed to hold his fire uh, on the North Korea front when he was in South Korea? What's your take? I think it's that last one. I mean, we can't really know what's in President Trump's head. But the best take of people both in the Asia-watching community and inside his own administration is that when the president does things, it's mostly from a lack of self-discipline and a personal an annoyance that Kim Jong-un is saying something bad about him. And the reason that's so destructive is because, as you pointed out, he spent this whole Asia trip reorienting America po policy towards North Korea. He said, let's make a deal. He provided an opening. That opening gives space to his diplomats who have been working diligently behind the scenes. There's a really good article in the Washington Post that I wrote all about what they're trying to do to avoid war and get to talks. And it's contingent upon him not upsetting the apple cart by getting into some sort of rhetorical back and forth for no reason, which seems to be exactly what he just did. Uh, yeah. there, you know, some people will say, oh, it's a madman theory, and they're playing good cop, bad cop. Mm. But the madman theory only works if you're doing it deliberately, okay? If you're just right. mucking around on Twitter while di your di diplomats are trying to avoid a conflict, there's no way that that could be helpful. Adam Entis, every time I see you, I, I assume that the minute we get off camera, you're going to go break a major story. I won't ask you if that is, in fact, the case. But I do want to ask you know, the, the status of the Mueller investigation right now and, and whether or not the president's statements about Russia you know, play or have any interaction with that investigation. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't think his uh, comments uh, that he just made about his meeting was, meetings with Putin uh, would have uh, Im implications. I, th I think uh, some of his earlier comments that he made uh, after, uh, the, uh, after the plea agreement was unveiled mm -hmm. involving George Pepe Papadopoulos, a former campaign advisor who, uh, you know, Trump then belittled and tried to set, make it sound like he was uh, uh, very much uh, kind of a, you know, carrying the coffee uh, at most. Uh, I think those uh, those can be interpreted as an effort to intimidate uh, potentially, uh, and that that is that's something that might be more relevant to uh, the prosecution uh, down the road. Uh, but you know his comments about Putin mm -hmm. and him him dismissing and 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 taking maybe Putin's taking him at his mm -hmm. word uh, is is rather consistent with uh, with what Trump has said in the past. I, I will note there's an interesting article about George Papadopoulos in the New York Times today, a competing paper, um, but. Usually Adam's got all the good stuff. Adam Entis, Josh Rogan, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it, guys. And one quick program.